Hi there guys, another video on the FX Crown today. Um, in the previous video I said that I'd be making a series of short videos on how I'm going to improve this gun and just make it a little better. This first video is going to be polishing the trigger sear. It's in the rifle already. I'll show you how to get that out and what I do to polish them up, make them nice and smooth. Now, the reason that we polish the trigger sear is to just make the cocking and the shooting of the gun just a tad bit better. These aren't going to be night and day improvements, they're just going to take what's already a great gun into the next level. Okay, so before we begin, you're going to need a couple tools. A 1.5 and a 2mm Allen key. A nice flat surface, this is just a really nice flat piece of plastic, however you could use a piece of glass or a surface plate if you have access to one. Also, some laps. These are diamond laps. Um, you can use sandpaper. We're going to be using some high grit sandpaper like a um, 2000 and 3000 probably. And then finally finishing off with some auto sole. First of all, I'll show you how to get the trigger set out. And then we'll start the polishing. Take your 2mm Allen key and just undo the power wheel here. Be careful, there's two ball bearings and a couple springs underneath this. So just be cautious as you take them out. Yeah they are there. You can leave the springs in the rifle but I find it's just best to take them out and you can do that with the 1mm Allen key. There they are there. Next you stand the block on the end and locate this screw here. This is a 1.5. These can be tight from the factory so what you want to do is get yourself a nice sharp good 1.5mm allen key just put it in the hole it's quite a ways down there and just crack it loose this one isn't too bad as I've already had it apart but they can be very tight um, so don't use a ball ended allen key use a nice sharp good one And here it comes there. Next up we can remove the hammer spring adjuster. This part here. Once that's out, the next thing is to push these pins out. I just use the 1.5mm Allen key, stand the block on its pick rail, and remove this top one first. Keep a hold of the trigger assembly as it can pop out if you're not careful. And there it comes there. You see it's got a spring on it, that's captive on, a, on the screw. Next up is the second pin. That's just a limit so that the trigger sear cannot flop down and come into contact with the back of the trigger. And the final one is the trigger sear itself. There it comes out. Stick it to one side for a second. While we're here, we'll remove the hammer assembly just in case. There it comes there. You can just slide it out with a trigger sear not in the rifle. This is free to slide out. Right, so we're done with the block for the moment. Put that to one side and bring back the trigger sear. Okay, thought you were in nice and close now. So I hope this is clear. Um, I'll just give you a quick explanation of what the faces do on the sear so you'll have a better understanding why we want to polish them and make them nice and smooth. This front flat face here is what the hammer rides up against when you cock the rifle back. Right, so this is the orientation that the trigger sear is in when it's in the rifle. Down, your trigger would be here. The pole would be out here. And your trigger sear, uh, your trigger blade would be over here somewhere. So, when it's installed in the gun, the hammer rides up this face here, then latches like so. Then, when the trigger is released or pulled, the sear is released, and the hammer is free to fly forward under the pressure of the spring. What we want to do is to make the cocking of the rifle the smoothest it can possibly be. So what we're going to do is take some time 
and polish this face here. We're also going to change the angle of the trigger sear slightly by putting a small radius on this corner. What this will do is just make the riding of this surface smoothest it can possibly be. This might seem like a waste of time but all these little improvements add up and turn an already good rifle into an excellent one. Let's get started. Okay this is probably going to be quite difficult to show for the camera but I'll do my best. We're going to be concentrating on this front face first. So what I'm going to do is take my medium lap and just run along this face. You want to keep all your strokes in the same direction so it's easier to polish out the scratches. After just a few strokes you'll see we're starting to wear through the blacking and get a nice smooth surface. If you don't have laps you could just use sandpaper. You don't want to remove too much material you just want to polish what's already there. Now what I'm going to be doing slightly radiusing this corner here. Now you don't have to do this but I found in my previous experiments that rounding this corner just takes off a little bit of the notchiness when you cock the rifle. Again it's a very small improvement but one I feel is worth doing. So to do this on the lap again I just rotate as I'm feeding in the trigger here. It's going to be very hard to show this on camera so what I'll probably do is just show you the before and the after. So there's a before. Okay so I've started this face but what I wanted to mention as well while we're here is this back face here. I'll be just cleaning this up and making it nice and smooth. You'll see already there are some shiny wear marks, I haven't touched this face yet, just shiny wear marks where this end of the hammer comes in contact with the sear and forces it up and over to latch, like so. We definitely don't want to take no material off this face, we just want to make sure it's nice and shiny and smooth. I'll get this started and I'll bring you back when we're near ready for final polishing. Ok guys, welcome back. What we've done, finished the polishing on the trigger. Uh, I'm not sure how well the camera's going to pick this up because obviously it's very, quite shiny. Um, but both the sides I just give a quick polish just to make them look nice. But the main face here has been nicely polished. See that there? So it should be nice and smooth as it rides up the hammer. We will be polishing the hammer but that will come in a separate video. Also this back edge here has been polished. Yeah, the camera doesn't really like the shiny surface but here it is there. You'll notice at the top here it's now got a little radius. It's really not much, it's just to help the hammer ride up. Here it is. Um, this back edge here which hooks onto the hammer is just given a quick polish up with some sandpaper on a nice flat edge. I used a bit of steel that I've milled to the correct specifications but um, the main, if you're going to do this at home, the main face is this one here. And you could do the back one just to help it along. Um, if you are going to do this at home I will say be careful taking too much material off in the wrong place on one of these trigger sears can leave your gun unsafe if you put a radius on this for example or it won't work you, you'll pull the hammer back and it won't latch properly so be careful and if you're unsure of anything I would recommend to just leave it alone um, you're pretty safe with this face here but again it's just polishing what's already there you want to keep all flat faces nice and flat and nice and square so you don't want to file more this side than this side, you want to keep it nice and flat. Right so that's the sear. I've also polished up the Pac-Man wheel, we call this a Pac-Man wheel because it sort of looks like Pac-Man. 
but this goes in the trigger assembly. So the Pac-Man wheel goes in the assembly like this. I would recommend you leave the Pac-Man wheel alone, leave it in the sear, uh, leave it in the trigger assembly, leave it as one piece. The benefit you gain from polishing this up is so small that you probably never notice it when it's all put back together in the rifle. However, just for completion's sake, we decided to polish it this time. And again, it's these little improvements, one piece at a time, that add up and make the difference in the final rifle. Right, now the sear's all polished up and we're happy, it's time to put the rifle back together. This is just the reverse of the order we took it out in. So first of all, take our hammer spring and hammer spring shuttle, pop it in the back there, then drop our hammer spring adjuster. Take the long grub screw and just put it in the back there. Take the 1.5mm Allen key and just do it up snugly. This needs to be tight but obviously not too tight as it's only a small Allen key. Once that's done we can put the trigger back in. For my trigger, I like to use this dry lube, like we did for the Bellevilles in the Leshy 2 regulator, just on the metal to metal contacts. You can have a good read of the label there. I got this from uh, Chambers Gunsmiths. So first of all, we'll put the trigger sear back in. This is a bit tricky to do, and I'll try and show you the best I can on the camera. So the trigger sear is this rear hole here. What I find is easiest is to lay the gun on its side and just gently put the trigger sear in. And with the pin in the top, you can normally get an Allen key and just move the trigger sear into position. There it goes. The trigger sear is now held in by the pin. Before we put the next pin in, it's time to just apply a small amount of dry lube to the sear. This dry lube does get everywhere so just be careful. And then just blow out the excess. Just a small amount will do you. It spreads pretty evenly. Then we can rotate the hammer back round. Give it a quick shake to make sure that it's seated. Next pin can go in now, like so. This simply stops the trigger sear from rotating back down. Finally, take our trigger assembly. You need to get this end of the spring onto that little knob of the trigger sear down there, like so. If you hold it in place, you can line up in here that hole. Put your pin in and just wiggle it until it goes through. There we have it. So that's the trigger all captive. Before we cock it, put the power wheel back on. First, put your springs in the holes. If I were doing a final assembly, I'd just put a, a very, very light smear of uh, lithium grease in these holes, just so that when you adjust your power wheel, it clicks nicely and smoothly. However, because I'm going to be taking this out and doing some more work on the hammer, I'll leave it as that for now. Next up, just pop your balls on the top there. It's easiest if you align it to min, to the top of the rail. Pull your hammer spring just the back and pop the power wheel on top. 2mm Allen key. Do it up. There we have it. This doesn't need to be super tight. Put it back on max. Now it's ready to cock. Okay, so I think we've made a marked improvement. Triggers nice and light. 
Mm, lovely to cock now, nice and smooth, no sticky points. Yeah, very nice. So, that's it for this one guys. Um, next video will probably be about polishing the hammer and the hammer spring. So, thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.